Un Academy. Let's crack it. So, welcome to our prelims capsule course of economy. This course will be covering in 12 classes of 2.5 hours each, so approximately 30 hours, right? So, whatever is the course for prelims economy, I will be covering the entire syllabus. So, it's not a revision course, rather, we will be covering thoroughly everything. The only difference will be it will be a little bit fast paced, right? So, along with the subject, we will be discussing questions also, previous year questions, and few questions which I have prepared on my own. And whatever topics we'll be discussing, along with that, we'll be discussing its facts also. Facts, schemes, current issues. So it will be going along with the topics. So separately, I'm not going to discuss any current affairs. Whatever topics we'll be discussing, along with that, we'll be discussing the current affairs also, if there is any scheme, relevant scheme, and questions also. Doubts. During the class, I'll be taking limited doubts. Uh, you have the option to ask doubts. So even during the class, we'll have some doubts, but not too many. Right. You can ask your doubts with the Telegram group also or after the class also. In between, also you'll ask, but limited doubts, right? What else? So budget, this year budget was interim budget. So nothing much was there for the exam and economic survey was not presented. But whatever budget and economic survey of the past years, Whatever I feel is relevant for your concept or information, all those I will be including in the uh, this classes. And separately, notes will not be provided. Whatever I'm going to write it here, you can download it as a PDF. You'll have the access. You guys also will have the online access, right? So you can attend it offline, online, both, and you'll be getting that access. But anyways, you have my Eco 450 this time PDF and book. Everything is there on PDF. So will be mostly focusing on understanding the thing, things and learning it plus practicing a lot of MCQs rather than notes making. Notes, I think uh, you already have enough of notes from different different institutes. So already up notes say you are quite burdened. So not much notes. The full discussion will be happening in the class and through questions also we'll be trying to understand a lot of concepts because Understanding concept is one thing and then using that concept in analyzing the questions is also very much important. If you have understood the concept, that doesn't mean that you'll be able to solve the questions. Okay. So every subject has certain terminology. Every subject has certain themes. So all these we'll be discussing. Okay. Any doubts before we start this class? And it is in uh, purely English medium. Any doubts before we start this class? Do we need to follow the Telegram channel apart from this course um, for the interview? See, in UPSC, anything is being asked these days, right? So I also have certain limitations that what I'm going to cover. As per whatever I feel is relevant, I'll be covering everything. But if you are reading any book, if you are following certain current affairs from the channel, it helps you in understanding better. But I'll be covering the entire things. But no one can guarantee that whatever I am going to write, only that UPSC is going to ask. Maybe guarantee me, but 90% of the things are coming from these things only which I am teaching. Or your experience, you see, basis pay, we are doing this thing. So if you are following that last one year ch Telegram channel, it gives you an added advantage. Even if you don't follow, doesn't matter, but it's better if you have time, you also follow that. Okay. So, ye, this prelims crash course, aisa kuch, uh, don't expect ki aaj kuch hum aisa bata denge ki aapne kabhi nahi suna hoga, right? So, we are going to start from the basics. Slowly, we'll move towards advanced topics and complex topics plus whatever are your doubts and confusions. Okay. So, Achha, to make this course successful or to make this course suitable for you, 
the best way which you can utilize this course in the most efficient way is that listen carefully okay if you will not listen carefully there will be a lot of doubts and it will be difficult for you also so try to make sure that in the in these two and a half hours you are concentrating on whatever i am saying please listen very carefully okay because if you are going to understand those things here it will be very less burdensome for you and you don't need to revise after the class but if you will not listen so make sure that two and a half hours you concentrate whatever i am saying theek hai नहीं इकोनॉमी में मिनरल रिसोर्सेज नहीं पढ़ोगे आप ठीक है इकोनॉमी में मिनरल रिसोर्सेज आप नहीं पढ़ोगे इकोनॉमी में सो व्हाट विल बी कवरिंग जीडीपी फंडामेंटल्स एक्सचेंज रेट मनी बैंकिंग आरबीआई गवर्नमेंट बजटिंग प्रोसेस टैक्स then agriculture schemes supply chain schemes international organizations hmm? international organizations ye sara kuch cover hoga minerals or we, this is not part of economy theek hai and agri schemes economy related agri schemes theek hai near the watch so you all have read economy once or anyone here who have not read any matlab this you have not read economy never you all have read economy once right so before we start just uh, i wanted to know ki why you want to attend this course again what is your expectation revision okay anyone else updates okay okay so easy uh, easy way of revising economy is to attend this 30 hours class right how many of you think that uh, you have read economy but you are confused your concepts are not clear that's why you are attending this chalo great theek hai so दिलीप जी कोई और पेन नहीं है सो टू अंडरस्टैंड द इकोनॉमी इन अ बेटर वे वी डिवाइड द होल इकोनॉमी इनटू फोर सेक्टर्स दिस इज जस्ट फॉर आवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट सो इफ दिस इज योर इंडियन इकोनॉमी इन दिस वी डिवाइड इनटू फोर सेक्टर्स वन इज गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर व्हेन आई एम सेइंग गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर इट इंक्लूड्स government of india state government and all government companies theek okay. a government sec government of india is different entity but if i am saying government sector it includes all the psus also theek okay. hai so one is your government sector second is your private sector second is your slowly will pick up theek okay. hai just have patience so second we have private sector so private sector includes all private businesses all private businesses like an academy all the businesses except government businesses except government psus whatever business is happening that is all private businesses then third is household sector so households means the 140 crore people living in india they belong to household sector human being specific so all the human beings that are here in india they are part of household sector how we define one household generally one household they have a common kitchen and common consumption theek okay? hai but household sector includes all the people who are living in india human beings basically and the third is sorry fourth is external sector. external sector what all things we include whatever from india is going outside either goods services or money 
or what or whatever is coming inside that we all treat as external sector upsc is not going to ask you that what is external sector this is just for our better understanding theek okay? hai so we have divided this so that we can understand economy in a better way now this indian economy inside we have three things government private household but the outsiders also impact indian economy because they purchase goods and services from here and they sell goods and services from here that's why we also study this external sector as a part of indian economy right even if it is outside doesn't matter it impacts indian economy so we uh, we discuss this as a part of indian economy so we have divided this into four sectors now let us understand in detail about the private sector first and then we'll come to other sectors now when i am saying private sector so private sector consists of what all private companies all private businesses small or big all private businesses is basically private sector so let's call it firms we call it firms enterprises theek okay? hai firms enterprises companies now this private sector what is the basic objective of a what is the basic the objective is to generate profit basic function of any company is to produce output to produce output output means goods and services services are already included here so this company produces output this is the function of any company to produce this output this company requires various things whatever this company requires we are going to divide all those things into four categories this firm may require various inputs right it may require two inputs three inputs hundreds of inputs we are going to club all the inputs into four categories so this is a firm so firm means it's just a name written out on a paper like reliance so what is reliance industries limited it's just a name written in the registrar of companies bombay so this is a firm now this firm requires entrepreneur entrepreneur now entrepreneur belongs to which sector household sector he is a human being he is a human being this belongs to private sector entrepreneur belongs to household sector because entrepreneur is a human being so he belongs to household sector enter all human beings are part of household sector this is a company this is part of private sector never ever insert the owner inside the company company is different they are joined by a relationship they are joined by a for example ntpc it's a psu right so it is part of which sector government sector you read na four sectors so government private household external so this is ntpc this is part of government sector now let's say vivek is doing a job here vivek belongs to which sector household sector so vivek does something for the company and company pays wages but vivek belongs to different sector and this company belongs to different sector vivek is giving something to the company his mental physical labor and company is giving wages that doesn't mean ki vivek is part of ntpc no vivek belongs to household sector ntpc is part of government sector and both are joined by a relationship in the same way this entrepreneur is a human being he is part of household sector this company is part of private sector entrepreneur is giving some input to the company what input uh, entrepreneur gives okay we'll discuss we'll discuss so entrepreneur gives some input then other inputs are any company requires labor right then natural resources natural resources what else capital batate hain for example let's say this firm is unacademy this firm is 
अन अकेडमी सो अन अकेडमी क्या है अन अकेडमी जस्ट अ नेम रिटर्न ऑन अ पीस ऑफ पेपर ठीक देर आर सम एंटरप्रनर्स दे आर गिविंग समथिंग दे आर वॉट एंटरप्रनर वॉट इनपुट एंटरप्रनर गिव दे मैनेज दिस दे मैनेज दिस लेबर आई एम हियर राइट आई एम गिविंग सम मेंटल लेबर सो इफ आई एम गिविंग समथिंग टू द कंपनी कंपनी मस्ट पे टू मी वेजेस नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज विल विल कम टू दिस नाउ दिस फॉर्म सपोज दिस इज अन अकेडमी if this is an academy form then what it is producing this goods are of two types intermediate inter mediate aap log ekdam ek ek cheez dhyan se sunte jao just have some patience we are going to understand a lot of things intermediate and final so goods can be divided into intermediate and final all intermediate goods are ultimately converted into final goods all intermediate goods are ultimately converted into final goods now final goods any company final goods there are two types of final goods consumption and capital consumption and capital since all intermediate goods are converted into final so we will not talk about that mostly consumption and capital and consumption goods like burger is a consumption good all services are consumption goods all services comes under consumption so if this form is an academy it is producing educational services right it is producing educational services and to produce educational services it requires inputs of four people labor natural resources capital and entrepreneur entrepreneur you know here you know me now this form requires two other things capital and natural resources now try to understand that if this is an academy what is capital so there are three characteristics of capital goods there are three characteristics of capital goods it is an output of a man made process it is an output of a man made process it again acts as input for further production process and while it is acting as an input likh lo aap there are three characteristics of capital goods and capital goods is the most important term of economy capital goods you write it is an output of man made process those who are referring my book don't need to write but otherwise aap likh sakte ho so capital goods has three characteristics first it is an output of man made process it is an output of man made process second it again acts as input in further production process it is an output of man made process it again acts as an input in further production process it is an output of man made process it again acts as an input for further production process and third characteristic is while it is acting as an input while it is acting as an input it doesn't get lost or transformed or consumed while it is acting as an input it doesn't get lost or transformed or consumed we will come to that depreciation don't worry so you understood three characteristics of capital goods now an academy is producing education it requires vivek it requires entrepreneurs what else an academy is requiring an academy is using this building hai na an academy is using this building to produce education or not an academy is using this digital board is this digital board capital good yes yes why because the first characteristic it is an output of man made process second characteristic it is again being used as an input for further production process and while we are using this as an input it is not getting lost or transformed or consumed wear and tear is separate but this is remaining as it is na wear and tear is different thing we'll discuss so this digital board is a capital good this building what if it is made by automated parts like you say painting or something so will it be considered as capital 
if automated process so who have who have made this process human being. it must be an output of man made process na? so we have made those process na? so what all things will be included here if this is an academy what will be capital give us examples kya kya hoga yahan pe building digital board ac all these things right natural resource acha land jo hai land the three characteristics of capital goods that you have written are those characteristics true for land land is not capital because the first characteristic that you have written it is an output of man made process land was naturally available so land is not a capital land plus natural resource no government can also produce hey see capital it is an output of man made process so government can also produce capital goods government companies can also produce capital goods right so try to understand it is in this way suppose one day the entrepreneurs of this company they asked me hey, let us come together and let's produce educational services so he gave the building someone gave land he constructed the building the entrepreneur took the risk and i started teaching so we four he started producing educational services in whose name an academy now an academy sold gs foundation course or economy prelims capsule course in 3000 rupees now that 3000 rupees will come to this company but this company is nothing it's just a name written on a piece of paper who is contributing in the production of this economy capsule course the fourth thing guys entrepreneur vivek the person who gave the land and person who gave the capital building and so all these four have contributed an academy is just a name but they are involved into the production process an academy as such is nothing it is just a name they all contributed worked together produced economy capsule course it was sold in rupees 3000 so through 3000 will be coming into the company's account but then this 3000 will be distributed among so when out of this 3000 whatever vivek gets is called wages out of this 3000 whatever is given to the person who provided land is called rent out of this 3000 whatever is given for this building or digital board is called interest and whatever is given to the entrepreneur is called profit so profit interest rent and wages they are basically money but depending on the type of input this terminology changes if the money is given to the labor these four are the inputs inputs of production or factors of production these four are the inputs of production or factors of production so when we give money to labor that is called wage when the company gives money to the natural resources who provide natural resources that is called rent understood doubt hai koi okay. now coming to this uh, capital good let's say this is mahindra tractors private limited this is mahindra tractors private limited so entrepreneur anand mahindra what will be the capital if this is a mahindra tractors private limited what will be the capital this is machinery plant not the tractor mahindra tractors private limited is a producing an output mahindra tractors private limited is producing capital goods see this will ultimately be converted let's not talk about this whatever output is produced it can be consumption or capital either to produce consumption goods or to produce capital goods we require capital we require if this is burger this is macdis and this is burger machine this is burger machine if mahindra tractors pro is producing tractors then this is factory building equipments 
so either, either we are producing whatever all the countries are producing they produce whatever final goods they are producing it can be divided into consumption or capital all the goods whatever is being produced it can be divided into consumption or capital whether you are trying to produce consumption goods or capital goods you require capital understood the economic course of an academy is a consumption goods all services come under consumption because you check the characteristic capital means something physical capital means something physical right right Sir, if a company is producing security services, it can be intermediate goods or consumption goods. I will explain you. Services are all consumption goods. This capital must be something physical. So, what did you say? Intermediate goods. What do you understand by intermediate goods? It has been produced, but you can't use it directly. It must further transform. It must further transform. For example, for example, the electricity which is coming here, it is intermediate or final? It is intermediate. It is intermediate. So, this see this capital ka matlab here. Mahindra Tractors Private Limited produced this tractor. Now, one day Vivek opened a company. Vivek. Agri farms. Vivek, agri farms. Now Vivek is the entrepreneur. There are certain laborer working, then natural resources and land. This tractor will act as capital. Tractor. And then it produces wheat, which is a consumption good. So try to understand the three characteristics that you have written. Capital, it is an output of man-made process. This tractor is an output of man-made process, Mahindra Tractors Private Limited. This tractor is again acting as an input for further production process. And while this is acting as an input, it is not getting lost or transformed or consumed. The electricity which is coming here, an academy is purchasing electricity and producing educational services. An academy is using digital board also. And an academy is using electricity also to produce educational services. Digital boards are remaining as it is, but electricity is getting consumed, transformed. So digital board is a capital good, but electricity intermediate goods. Why electricity is intermediate goods? Because it has been produced through a process and it will further transform. For example, See, just a burger. So, burger is a final good. You can directly consume. You can directly consume. Tractor is a capital good. But here, electricity is not being directly consumed. An academy is using, suppose there is a power plant, coal, electricity, education. This is final good. This is natural resources. This is intermediate. Huh. Sir, right. See, okay, let me tell you how to judge whether a particular good is intermediate or final. The best way to judge is last transacted product in the market. Last transacted product in the market. When I am purchasing electricity at my home, so I purchase electricity. And with that electricity, let's assume that I am teaching my children. So I purchase electricity and I produce educational services. But that is for my self-consumption. I am not selling it in the market. So last transaction in my case 
is electricity. But here in case of Unacademy, the last transacted product in the market is this. So here in case of Unacademy, education is the final good. Electricity is the intermediate. At my home, electricity is the final good. Electricity is the final good. Now, any company, any company, it will use capital as an input. It will use capital good as an input. Either to produce consumption good or capital good. A company uses capital good. And it may use raw materials. It may use raw materials. It may use intermediate goods. Raw material and intermediate goods will transform. But capital goods remain as it is. Capital goods remain as it is. For example, if this is Mahindra Tractors Private Limited, it see this is a standard classification for all types of inputs. We have not a separate classification. If this is Mahindra Tractors Private Limited, we have factory building, then we may have steel, we may have coal using the inputs. So coal is a natural resource. Steel is an intermediate good and the factory building will be capped. So any company may use raw material, intermediate goods. We don't have any further segregation for intermediate goods. But any company, any to produce anything we require, we may use capital goods, intermediate goods or natural resources. Intermediate goods and natural resources will transform. But capital goods remain as it is. And to produce either consumption or capital goods, we require capital goods. So, if this is your economy, and we talk about final goods because ultimately all intermediate goods will be converted into final. So, when it will be converted into final, then we will talk about. So, we focus on final goods because sometime that intermediate will get converted. Na? So, this economy produces final output. And this final output consists of consumption and capital. And this two types of output is produced by four factors of production. Entrepreneur, capital, natural resources, and and once this final output is produced, then this output is purchased by four sectors of economy that you read. Government, private, household, external, X. Understood? So this is happening every day. This is happening every day. So in the economy, all the firms are producing output. They are selling, they are getting money, and then they are returning rent, interest, interest, profit. So they all work, they produce goods, they sell, they get money, and then they return. So try to visualize that in this Indian economy, Indian economy, all the firms in this Indian economy, whatever output is being produced, this year, how much output is being produced in the Indian economy? This year, how much final output is expected to be produced in the Indian economy? Sorry? I am saying that every economy is producing final output every year. And this final output consists of two things, consumption goods or capital. Any good you tell, I will divide into consumption or capital. So every year, Indian economy is producing this output. So this particular year, 2023-24, how much output is expected to be produced in the Indian economy? Abhi to fab chal raha hai, but ab, huh? What I am asking? GDP. I am asking GDP. So present here ka GDP? Quantity. 
वो बजट है 47.7 अप्रॉक्स अप्रॉक्स टू 97 लाख करोड़ डिवाइड इट बाय रुपीस 80 एंड टेल मी हाउ मच इट इज कमिंग इन डॉलर्स जल्दी से डिवाइड बाय रुपीस मोबाइल यूज कर लो डिवाइड बाय 80 एंड टेल मी हाउ मच इट इज कमिंग इन यूएस डॉलर्स 3. पॉइंट आ रहा है करो जस्ट डिवाइड बाय 80 ना 3.7 सो आवर इकोनॉमी थोड़ा सा याद रखने की कोशिश करो ट्रिलियन में हाउ मेनी जीरोस 12 ट्रिलियन में वी हैव 12 जीरो इधर देखो बोर्ड पे करोर वी हैव 7 जीरो लाख वी हैव 5 जीरो दिस लाख करोर इज 1 ट्रिलियन 7 और 5 12 तो 1 लाख करोर इज 1 ट्रिलियन 297 डिवाइडेड बाय 80 80 समझ रहे हो ना क्या है हां सो राइट नाउ आवर जीडीपी इज अप्रॉक्स 97 लाख करोड़ एंड आउट ऑफ दिस हाउ मच इज कंजम्पशन एंड हाउ मच इज कैपिटल जो हमने बताया ना कि एवरी इकोनॉमी प्रोड्यूसेस कंजम्पशन एंड कैपिटल गुड्स आउट ऑफ द 297 लाख करोड़ व्हाट परसेंटेज इज कैपिटल गुड्स इंडिया में आउटपुट प्रोड्यूस हुआ ना 297 lakh crore is the output produced. So out of this, how much is the capital good? Because all the output can be classified as consumption or capital. <laughs> Approx 30% capital goods. Approx 30%. And that 30% is called? Investment. Never ever think of investment as how much you are purchasing shares or something. Okay. Investment is always measured from the output side. Whatever output is produced, that is capital goods. That is called investment. Economy may we are producing consumption goods and capital goods. Whatever capital goods are produced, that is called investment. So in our economy, approximately 30% is capital goods. So that is called investment, gross investment. <laughs> we'll come to the gross. Kya hota hai. So in our economy, investment is 30%. I am uh, telling you a statement. You have to tell whether it is true or false. In the last... Uh, Eight years. In the last eight years, except COVID year, forget about the COVID. Forget about the COVID year. In the last eight years, since last eight years, except COVID year, the investment in the Indian economy has increased. Percentage term, of course. In except COVID year, a statement hai. In the last eight years, investment percentage of GDP has steadily increased in the last eight years. How many of you think it's true? Statement, no. ah. How many of you think it's true? How many of you think it's false? Dilip, you have file in this? So, can you select it? By investment, right now I said 30% approx. Right now, I said 30% approx. In the last eight years, it has not consistently increased. It, fluctu it has fluctuated. Take 
कोविड ईयर सिर्फ कोविड ईयर राइट नो अप्रोक्सीमेटली थर्टी परसेंट आई सेट फ्लक्चुएट करता है Please try to understand. I am talking about percentage. I am talking about percentage. Because a lot of times you may not be knowing the data. I don't expect that you are you have mugged up all this data. But even without data, if you have common sense, you can do this statement correct. How come? This is something called percentage. For example, you have GS paper and optional paper. So GS 1000 optional 500. Let's say in percentage terms, you are getting in optional you are getting 35 percent out of 1500. You are getting 35 percent in optional and 65 in GS. ठीक है? 35 percent in optional and 65 percent in out of the 1500 marks. 65 percent is you are getting. मतलब exact ratio is so 33.33, but your marks. Let's say out of 1500 you got total 1000 marks, and in 1350 you got optional two papers combined, and 650 you got GS. ये ही वाला percentage, हाँ? Now this percentage, it chances are it will fluctuate. Your GS marks cannot consistently in percentage terms it cannot increase or in optional percentage will not increase. It may fluctuate. Absolute GS marks if you are putting effort, your absolute GS marks may increase for three years consistently. But percentage, sometimes your optional may increase, sometimes your GS may. So whenever we talk about percentage, consistent increase. Not all. I would not say not possible. Likely, very difficult. Very difficult. So whenever some statement is coming, so whenever UPSC is giving this statement, they are not expecting that you have some data at you. You should have this sense of what they are asking. Okay. If I say that value of capital goods produced, value of capital goods produced in the economy has consistently increased, yes, it may be true. But percent investment percentage in the economy has consistently increased. ये investment percentage increase करके कहाँ जाएगा? Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, hundred पार कर जाएगा? नहीं ना? So this is a percentage. It the chances are that it will not increase consistently. Will your GS marks consistently increase to sixty five, seventy, eighty, ninety? Then what about the option? So its percentage, the so likely chances are that it will not increase consistently for eight years. Two, three, four years possible, hai, but eight, ten years chances less. So much, guys. Are you? Huh? By inflation, you talk about inflation or not? When I am saying. See, still you are not understanding. We are producing only two types of goods: consumption goods and capital goods. ठीक? Every year, value of consumption goods is also increasing, and value of capital goods is also increasing. every year is increasing. Except that COVID year, every year our consumption goods is also increasing, our capital goods is also increasing. But that percentage or ratio, I am saying that ratio of capital goods is increasing. So ratio likely chances are less. Here we are producing twenty eight percent capital goods. Then we produce twenty nine point five percent capital goods. So this is percentage. Now can it increase to eighty ninety? Not possible. <coughs> समझ गए तो दिस इज परसेंटेज इट कैन नेवर जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से गवर्नमेंट कलेक्ट्स 2% लैंड रेवेन्यू व्हाटएवर इज द लैंड वैल्यू गवर्नमेंट कलेक्ट्स हाउ मच 2% लैंड रेवेन्यू राइट 
एग्रीकल्चर लैंड पे होता है ना टू परसेंट लैंड लेट से दिस टू परसेंट विल इंक्रीज एवरी ईयर लैंड प्राइस विल इंक्रीज तो गवर्नमेंट एब्सोल्यूट टैक्स कलेक्शन विल इंक्रीज बट टू परसेंट लैंड रेवेन्यू कैन गवर्नमेंट इंक्रीज टू थ्री परसेंट फोर फाइव सिक्स टेन ट्वेंटी सो परसेंट हाँ परसेंटेज एंड रेशियो को समझो आप आई होप की अभी क्लियर है ये Out of the total output, we are producing two goods: consumption and capital goods. Capital goods ratio it may increase percentage two years, three years, four years. Then again, it dips. Generally, likely. समझ गए अच्छा सो नाउ कैपिटल गुड्स इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड सो वॉट एवर कैपिटल गुड्स वी प्रोड्यूस इज कॉल्ड ग्रॉस कैपिटल फॉर्मिंग ग्रॉस सो ग्रॉस मीन्स टोटल ग्रॉस मीन्स टोटल सो इन्वेस्टमेंट इज कॉल्ड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ कैपिटल गुड्स इज कॉल्ड ग्रॉस कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इज कॉल्ड ग्रॉस कैपिटल एक्यूमुलेशन सो कैपिटल एक्यूमुलेशन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन gross investment production of capital goods all means the same things all means the same things okay now depreciation you understand wear and tear depreciation means wear and tear for example and two other terms that you should understand stock and flow it will be used again and again stock and flow means if you can express something at a point of time if you can express something at a point of time it is called stock and if you can express something for a period of time it is called flow right for example how much money is in your pocket it is stock or flow stock, stock. gdp gdp flow investment investment is flow invest what do you understand by investment production of capital goods if production of consumption and capital goods that is gdp is flow how can production of capital goods will be stock it's also flow it's also flow profit of a company hmm profit of a company flow you calculate profit in a period of time you don't calculate profit at a moment of time so see this board if there is a factory worth rupees 1000 worth rupees 1000 so what is rupees 1000 this is the value of the equipments in the factory this is the value of equipments in the factory now this factory worked for a year and it produced 70 rupees of consumption goods and 30 rupees of capital goods fine 70 rupees consumption goods and is it possible or not possible as yes hey whatever is the value of the factory it is not going to produce the same output this is the value of the factory it worked for a year produced 70 rupees of consumption goods and 30 rupees of capital goods now when this factory worked for a year there was some wear and tear there was some wear and tear which is called depreciation let's say the wear and tear was rupees 10 rupees 10 means whatever is the wear and tear if we have to correct it it will cost rupees 10 right so the factory wear and tear was worth rupees 10 if we have to again correct it it will cost rupees 10 so this factory worked for a year this equipment may wear and tear was worth rupees 10 and this factory produced 70 rupees of consumption goods and 30 rupees of capital goods so what is the gross means total gross investment rupees gross how much is total capital goods produced 30 net investment gross investment minus depreciation this is equal to rupees 30 minus 20 is rupees sorry gross output what is the gross output rupees 
net output to produce 100 rupees of output 10 rupees of output got destroyed net output gross output minus deficits this becomes 100 minus 10 is equal to Generally, we focus on gross. We don't every time calculate depreciation. You also not be required to calculate depreciation, but you should know the concept. Suppose I purchased a tractor, right? Suppose it caught fire and now I can't use it. Can we call it depreciation? No. Depreciation means normal wear and tear of physical capital. So, Investment, you understood, capital goods. What is our target to produce, to increase GDP, to produce this output, you require capital or not? And to produce the output, you require capital. There is a lot of focus on investment. Why we are focusing a lot on the country's government's policies that bring in investment. So there is a lot of focus on investment. So investment means production of capital goods. Why we are focusing on investment? To increase output. It is not an end in itself. The purpose of increasing investment is to produce more output. I'm telling you a statement. You have to tell whether it is true or false. If in, so investment, you understand? production of capital goods because if we will produce more capital goods then we will be having more output right more machines more out if the investment in the economy is declining if the investment in the economy is declining gdp will decrease If the investment, if the absolute investment, let's say, if the absolute investment in uh, production of capital goods, if the absolute investment is declining, GDP will decrease. How many of you think it's true? Someone may right. If successive years, every year, our production of capital goods in absolute, absolute, samaste ho, rupees. Hai. In successive years, the production of capital goods is declining. Our output GDP will increase or decrease? How many of you think it will decrease? And how many of you think it will increase? <coughs> On 31st March, 2021. Both on 31st March 2021, India had certain capital goods. India had certain capital goods uh, worth rupees 1000. So we had a capital stock worth rupees 1000. So the stock of capital on 31st March 2021 was rupees 1000. Capital stock worth rupees. This capital stock worked for a year and produced rupees 70 of consumption goods and rupees 30 of capital goods. Thirty-first March 2022. So, in one particular year, this factory worked for a year and it produced 70 rupees of consumption goods and 30 rupees of capital goods. What is the investment in this period? What is the investment in this year? 30. Production of capital goods 30. So this will get consumed. Burger, this will get consumed. But this is a machine. It will get added in the capital stock. We already have machines for rupees 1000. This machine produced some consumption good and some machines, capital. 
consumption goods will get consumed this will remain in the economy so now on 31st march 2022 what is the capital stock isme kisi ko doubt now forget ab depreciation aap accounting hum nahi pad rahe every time we are not going to aap concept samjho right now for the next year 31st march 2023 in this year see earlier only this factory was at work now this is also at work here the output was rupees 100 and investment investment is flow and capital stock is stock whatever will be the investment in this year it will get it, get added in the capital stock now this much of capital stock is at work the output here will be equal to 100 or more than 100 more than 100 kyunki why because this capital stock is already there so this capital stock will already produce 100 rupees of output but we have 30 more of capital so let's say here output is 120 let's say here 100 consumption plus 20 capital possible hai <coughs> what is the capital stock here on 31st march 2023 1000 plus 50 now the output here will be 120 or more more output here let's say 140 consumption investment every year is declining investment every year is declining but output every year is so this is statement that if investment will decline output will increase it's true aap samjho if you have 100 rupees in your pocket right 1000 rupees was in your pocket and you are a daily wage laborer you earn daily so you had earlier 1000 rupees now every day the wage that you are earning is declining every day you are earning less some day you earn 50 then 40 then 30 even if your earning is less the money in your pocket will increase so every year investment is less but production will depend on capital stock if investment becomes zero then gdp will stagnate it will not increase if here in this year this machine would have produced all the burgers this machine would have produced all the burgers then investment would have been zero capital stock would have been 1000 only and next year output would have been same are depreciation ko aap log kyon accounting samajhna cha rahe ho if depreciation is less than don't worry about that depreciation ha bhai ab samajhne ki koshish karo if there is certain level of investment in the economy even if it is declining your output will increase your output will kya bol raha ho bataiye yes if investment is not happening in the economy then output will remain constant 
no output will remain constant right yes we can change it i wanted to show you investment is declining we can do it no no i'm i was just showing you an example that even if investment is declining your capital stock is increasing your capital stock is increasing even if it is declining your capital stock is increasing and since capital stock is increasing your output will increase because output depends on capital stock output depends on capital stock and it has happened in the past in india we have dekho that investment in the economy has declined and our gdp has increased abhi aate hain us pe aate hain acha gdp you understand abhi we will discuss to i am giving you a statement aapko batana whether it is true or false and barring that covid year barring that covid year our gdp except that covid year has uh, consistently increased our gdp in the last 10 years except covid year has consistently increased aap is matlab iska samjho our gdp has consistently increased in the last 10 years true or false except covid year our gdp has consistently increased true our gdp growth has fluctuated sometimes growth is 7% sometimes 5% sometimes 8% so growth is fluctuating so even if growth is 2% that means our output has increased 2% samajh rahe ho na now you see this graph ये देखो ध्यान से बोर्ड पे 14-15 ओके दिख रहा है ना 2014-15 दिस इज जीडीपी ग्रोथ दिस इज जीडीपी ग्रोथ एंड दिस इज इन्वेस्टमेंट राइट 14-15 आवर ग्रोथ वाज आउटपुट इंक्रीज बाय 7.4 हियर इन्वेस्टमेंट वाज 30 परसेंट फ्रॉम 14-15 टिल हियर आवर इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज declined 30% 28% but growth is 8% 8% mein aur output has increased if growth would have turned negative then would have said ki acha decrease hua but our output is increasing but investment is declining why because even if investment is declining we are producing capital goods even if our investment is declining are we not producing capital goods yes we are producing capital goods if the investment is 15% if investment comes down to 15% will our gdp increase yes it will increase it should be greater than depreciation theek hai so this is a fact this is a fact that if investment increases or decreases gdp keeps on increasing until its investment becomes zero and it has happened in the past it has happened in the why 14 to 6 17 why investment has declined koi idea economy jo thoda bahut piche news ar demonetization yahan hua yaar 2014 mein modi ji aaye
एनीवन क्यों व्हाई इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉज डिक्लाइनिंग एनपीए क्राइसिस एनपीए क्राइसिस और भी रीजन होते हैं बट द मेजर वॉज एनपीए क्राइसिस नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स बैंक banks started declaring npas raghuram rajan ki regime a lot of banks started declaring npas theek hai theek hai we will come to this to abhi ye statement clear hai theek hai gdp growth and all this theek hai na koi doubt is tarah se question aaya previous years mein of course aaya hai jaake dekho now what i said about investment investment how we defined production of capital goods but this is not exactly true isme kya there is slight difference what is the difference is the board pe dekho the per the investment the purpose of investment is to produce goods and investment again saying yes, tell me one gdp to i hope you aap samajhte ho वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस विद इन द डोमेस्टिक वी विल अंडरस्टैंड बट लेट मी जस्ट चेक कि कितना समझते हो आप आई परचेज सम इक्विपमेंट और सम लैंड और एनीथिंग आई परचेज टुडे इन वन सीयर एंड आफ्टर फाइव डेज इन द सेम फाइनेंशियल ईयर आई परचेज समथिंग सम इक्विपमेंट सम गुड्स इन वन क्रोप and sold it in 1.5 crores right will this be part of gdp this 50 lakh this 50 lakh will be part of gdp or not soch lo you have got 30 seconds samajh raha ho i any equipment in the economy i purchased its price increased within the same year i sold it i got some gain i got some benefit matlab ठीक है ना वन क्रोड आई परचेज एंड सोल्ड इट इन वन पॉइंट टू सी आर ट्वेंटी लाख गेन सो दिस ट्वेंटी लाख गेन विल इट बी काउंटेड इन जीडीपी और नॉट सो मेनी ऑफ यू थिंक इट विल नॉट बी काउंटेड कितने लोग लगता है काउंट होगा सो इट इज नॉट काउंटेड वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स प्रोड्यूस्ड value of goods produced it was not produced it was already there for example abhi main aap abhi aap samajh jaoge zyada surprise hone ki zarurat nahi abhi aap samajh jaoge i purchased shares of reliance and its price increased and i sold i purchased shares worth rupees 100 and sold it in rupees 150 So I gained rupees fifty. Will it be included in GDP? Hmm. I I purchase shares means what? I purchase Reliance Company in one lakh crore and sold it in one point two lakh crore. That is my gain. Will it be counted in GDP? Not at all. Did I did economy produce something? No. it was just a transactional gain gdp is value of otherwise aap socho every year so much of buying and selling is happening they are all transactions they are all transactions gdp is value of goods and services produced when i purchased land and sold it in rupees 1 cr and sold it in 1.5 cr i did not produce anything i purchased some asset or anything i sold it in at a higher price was something produced no so this is not part of gdp sir is trade counted in services ha huh? is trade counted in services so you will have to tell with an example okay. for example for example here educational services are being produced here educational services are being produced it will be counted in gdp it will be counted in gdp trade yes it will be counted but depends on what for example or what kind of example you want to ask you tell me ha huh. it will not be counted that gain is will not be counted 
No, this will not be counted. In GDP, it will not be counted. See, as a you will call all, everything as service. This is not service produced in the economy. This is a brokerage charge. Yes, it will be counted. Brokerage charge will be counted in GDP. Oh, I will tell you one thing. One second, one second, one second. अच्छा जी आपको जस्ट एक मिनट में बताते हैं व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय वैल्यू एडिशन वैल्यू एडिशन मींस आई परचेज लेट्स से आई परचेज अ स्टील वर्थ रुपीस 50 एंड कन्वर्टेड इनटू सम प्रोडक्ट वर्थ रुपीस 80 तो माय वैल्यू एडिशन इज 30 माय वैल्यू एडिशन इज 30 आई परचेज समथिंग रॉ मटेरियल इन 50 कन्वर्टेड इनटू सम अदर प्रोडक्ट हुज प्राइस इज रुपीस 80 सो माय वैल्यू एडिशन इज 30 so value addition means how much value my work fetches in the market. How much value my work fetches in the market. Whether it fetched or not does not matter. Whether it fetched or not does not matter. If I did some work and its value, if its value increased, that is my value addition. Whether I sold that product or not, that doesn't matter. Right? Now, let us understand your doubt with an example. So you purchased a Maggie packet from a retail shop. Okay. So retailer, Nestle, wholesaler, retailer. Let's say remove the taxes. You paid 10 rupees. So when you are paying 10 rupees, remove the taxes part. When you are paying 10 rupees, so everyone is getting something. Anna? Retailer gets something or not? Yes. So let's say he got five. Two, three. So when you are purchasing Maggie packet from a retailer, does retailer do any value addition? Yes. Of course, yes. See, what do you understand by value addition? The value of your work. He purchased Maggie packet from the wholesaler and selling it to the consumer. Right? So he did some work, he purchased and sold. And for his work, he is charging three rupees. So what is his value addition? Three rupees. He is doing some work. He purchased and sold in three rupees. So this three rupees is his value addition. This will be counted in GDP. If a Maggie packet is in India is producing just one Maggie packet, and the price is written rupees ten. Price is written rupees ten. So a Maggie packet was produced and you consumed it. Purchased ten rupees. Consumed. So when you paid 10 rupees, who got that 10 rupees? Nestle wholesaler retailer. How many rupees of goods got produced? 10 rupees. Value addition of Nestle company 5, wholesaler 2, retailer 3. So these are services. This is service. This will be counted in GDP. Just transactional gain will not be counted. Okay? Ah. Ha. Maggie is a consumption good. Equipments, okay. So let's let let us make it a screwdriver. I purchased a screwdriver in rupees ten, produced by some company. It came through wholesaler and retailer. So I paid ten rupees for the screwdriver. So that is part of the 10 rupees will be part of GDP. Right. Transactional gains. Transactional gains, I am saying. This retailer is doing some job. This retailer is doing some activity. He is doing some value addition. It's not a as such trading happening. Otherwise, what will what will have? There are a lot of companies in India. Every time we buy and sell, without being anything, then GDP will keep on increasing. Every day, mergers, acquisitions, buy sell is happening. So as such, without being done anything, the value will keep on increasing. This is not that thing. 
he has opened a shop he is doing work he is purchasing because the products are not delivered you directly by the wholesaler he is doing something he must have taken from wholesaler some transportation something would have been involved he is spending time so he is doing some value addition देखो इफ इफ यू आर रजिस्टर्ड नाउ दिस विल नॉट बी काउंटेड इन अगर ऑफिसियली देखोगे तो इट विल नॉट बी काउंटेड इट विल नॉट बी काउंटेड एज सच इफ समवन इज सेलिंग टी ऑफ कोर्स इट विल बी काउंटेड आप एक एक्सेप्शन लियो एज सच ठीक है व्हाटएवर टी सेलर्स आर सेलिंग हियर इट इज काउंटेड इन जीडीपी नो हां हां यस value addition only what you constructed not the land like the increase in the value of land with time that this is just it won't be counted no it will not it won't be counted yeah, it every year value in a because of inflation price of all the goods is increasing that is not counted whatever is produced i purchased land worth rupees 1 crore constructed something sold it in 1.5 cr so this gain 50 rupees 50 lakh is because what i constructed so that will be counted in gdp ha so i was saying ki uh, capital goods uh, investment i told you that investment is production of capital goods but this definition is not exactly correct why i will just tell you now what is the purpose of capital goods to increase output this is only purpose to increase output if a country is producing 30% capital goods b country is producing 40% capital goods they were at the same level of development one country is doing 30% capital goods other country is 40% next year which country will be able to produce more output those which are doing 40% theek hai na india has touched maximum investment 39% in 2008 we have never ever touched 40% investment in our entire history china has consistently then more than 40% investment for three decades so that's why they've been able to increase their gdp five times more than india so purpose of investment are you understanding so purpose of capital goods is to produce more output now see here suppose in any particular year rupees 70 consumption goods produced plus rupees uh, 30 capital goods what is the output what is the output gdp kya hai gdp 100 na gdp is 100 na ha investment 30 so if some factory produce this next year this will also get added next year production will be more than 100 more than suppose बोर्ड पे देखो ध्यान से देर वॉज सम कैपिटल स्टॉक दैट कैपिटल स्टॉक प्रोड्यूस दिस आउटपुट सो इन्वेस्टमेंट हियर इज थर्टी रुपीज टोटल आउटपुट इज हंड्रेड सपोज दिस थर्टी रुपीज कैपिटल गुड्स विच गॉट प्रोड्यूस इट वॉज एक्सपोर्टेड एक्सपोर्ट नाउ आई एम आस्किंग यूर क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज द इन्वेस्टमेंट इन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री investment in 2223 zero why zero because this capital goods machine gone abroad now it will not work in the country it's gone abroad next year output will be if this is exported next year output will be 100 100 there was some capital stock there was some capital stock working that capital stock produced this if we add in the capital stock next year output increases but if this capital stock got exported and this got consumed next year again output will be 100 so when we export some logic samjho what was the purpose of capital goods to produce output now this is gone so now this is not working to produce anything 
that means investment is zero the purpose of investment is to produce more output now this is gone so in, when we export capital goods it will be subtracted from our investment of course we'll get currency notes we'll get currency notes that is not investment we will get money okay we will get money but that is not investment from money you buy you can buy capital goods for example we exported 30 rupees of capital goods we imported 20 rupees of capital goods what is the investment in 22 23 20 investment is 20 gdp is gdp is 100 and by gdp is production within the gdp is 100 investment is Investment is production of capital goods minus export of capital goods plus import of capital goods. Aapko iska logic clear hona chahiye. Hmm. Right. Yes. Depends on this machine. It will remain safe. It will remain same. So import of capital goods are part of investment or not? Yes, it's part of investment. It's part of investment. So what is the investment percentage? Impo uh, investment percentage? 20%. We express most of the parameters in terms of GDP. GDP for us is a very sacrosanct figure. Everyone knows our GDP. So most of the terms we express as a percentage of GDP. Okay. Most of the parameters we express in terms of GDP. Yes. GDP is not going to change. GDP is what we produce. GDP is 100. So investment is 50. GDP is 100. Investment percentage is 50 percent. What we do about that for that extra investment? 30 percent got extra. See how we calculate investment. Whatever capital goods remained in the economy. Produced 30, it all exported, imported 50. So how much capital goods ultimately got accumulated in this period? 50 rupees of capital goods. So investment is 50 rupees. Starting when we have to calculate, how much the GDP was start? That only we have to calculate. Like 100 was in there, no? We produced 100 rupees of output in this year within the territory. So GDP is 100. Whether all we sent abroad doesn't matter. GDP will still be 100. How do we define exports? Production within the territory of India and sold to non-residents Indians. Non-resident may foreigner, government, NRIs, everyone will come. So export is production within the territory of India and sold to non-residents. Non-residents and NRIs be aayenge, foreigners, foreign companies, foreign governments, everyone will come. Okay. So import of capital goods are part of investment. So much again? Okay. Of course not, it will be counted. Huh? GDP is value of goods. Are imports part of GDP? 
No, not at all. They are imports are not part of GDP. Can we express imports as a percentage of GDP? Of course, yes. Is Vivek salary part of US GDP? No. Can Vivek salary be expressed as a percentage of US GDP? Of course, yes. Koi bhi I, uh, parameter, any value, you can express in terms of anything. So if you are expressing investment as a percentage of GDP, that doesn't mean that all the investment was produced within India. So, see in our economy, 140 crore people are there. Every day we all are producing something. Someone is acting as entrepreneur, someone is acting as labor. Someone is acting, giving capital. Someone is giving land. We all are producing something. So how much we are producing in in particular year, in today's year, in this year? 297 lakh crore. Let's say this is firms. So firms required four inputs. Entrepreneur, labor, capital, and natural resources land. Now, entrepreneur and labor belong to household sector, right? So the two inputs of the firms was coming from household sector. The other two inputs, land and capital, may have been provided by some other person. So indirectly also that input is being provided by the household sector, we can say that. It's not directly part of household sector, but someone would have been providing that input. So this firm directly or indirectly is getting all the inputs from the household sector, right? So this is household sector. We have read four sectors, private, this is private sector basically. Private sector, household sector, government and external will bring, okay? First let us understand these two sectors. So this firm was requiring four inputs. All the four inputs was directly or indirectly coming from the household sector. Entrepreneur is here, labor is here. The person who gave land is here. The person who gave machines is here. This company produced burger worth rupees 100. So burger will be sold. Who contributed in the production of this burger? All those who contributed, they are here. It's just a name. So this will be given back to them as profit, interest, rent, and wages. How much they will get? Rupees? 100 or less than 100? More than 100. Entrepreneur is here. So how much they will get? 100. If the burger was sold in 100 rupees, so 100 rupees got generated. The entrepreneur is also here. Everyone is here. This is just a name written on a piece of paper. So they got rupees 100. This 100 rupees then they spend expenditure and this company sells the burger to them. This company sells the burger worth rupees 100. What is happening in India? We are 140 crore people. We all are working as entrepreneur labor, providing capital or natural resources. We all are working. We are producing 297 lakh crore of output. That output is being sold. We are getting it as Profit, interest, rent, and wages. Take it. Maybe I'm getting wages. You you have land, you have given land to someone, you are getting rent. So we all are producing output 297 lakh crore and we are getting profit, interest, rent, and wages. How much? 297 lakh. Then that entire amount we are spending. The entire amount we are spending to purchase the output which we ourselves have produced. Try to visualize. The whole India is producing how much output? 297 lakh crore. So all of us, someone is working as an entrepreneur. Someone has given capital, someone has given natural resources, and someone is giving his labor. So we all are producing 297 lakh crore of output. It is being sold in the market. How many rupees got generated? 297 lakh crore. So who will get this 297 lakh crore? Who have contributed? Who have contributed the four factors of production? So we all are getting profit, interest, rent, and wages. 297 lakh. Then we are spending 
and we are purchasing the same product that we are producing. What I am producing that you are purchasing? Maybe your business is there if what you are producing I am purchasing. This is called circular flow. We will bring in saving here. We will bring. Just hold on. So here we are not saving. We are consuming everything. So we produce something. We got money. We spend the entire amount. Next year, try to understand. Next year again production will be 100. Whatever was the capital stock in the economy that had the capacity to produce a burger worth rupees 100. That had the capacity to produce 100 rupees of household. Whatever was the capital stock in the economy that had the capacity to produce 100 rupees of output. Okay. So next year again it will produce 100. What if we want to increase the production? We will have to produce machines. We will have to produce machines. So how machines got produced in the economy? The board pay focus. Karo. How machines got produced in the economy? Suppose next year, these people decided that they will again produce the output worth rupees 100. The value of the output, 100 produced. Because the economy has the capacity to produce only 100 rupees of output. So they again worked and produced output worth rupees 100. How much they got? 100. Jitna output produced, they will get rupees 100. But this time they decided that they will not spend everything. They spent only rupees 70. So here they saved rupees 30 and spent the rupees 70. 70 they spent. So if they spent 70, company will sell how many rupees of goods to them? 70 rupees. So out of this 100, the company sold uh, rupees 70. This company sold to them. To whom the company is selling? To the household. That means this was consumption goods. Household purchase consumption goods. Right? See, they had produced how many rupees of output? 100 rupees of output. So they got 100 rupees. But they spent only 70. How many rupees left? 30 rupees. How many goods are left with the firm? 30 rupees. 30 rupees to bache ka Yata clear hai? No, 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 no. See, I am saying that they produce output worth rupees 100 and they got rupees 100. What is the output? I am not saying anything. I am saying that they got 100 rupees. They produce, if they are producing 100 rupees of output, they will get only 100 rupees. They decided to spend only 70 rupees. So this firm will sell 70 rupees to them. Since this firm has sold to the households, so it will basically consumption goods. So 70 rupees consumption goods this firm sold to the household. How many rupees of goods left with the firm? 30 rupees. How many rupees left with these households? 30. Here I am writing firms. There are various other firms also present in the economy. If they keep this saving in cash form, if they Keep this saving in cash form. So what will happen? If they will keep this in cash form, the companies, the other companies won't be able to purchase these goods or they may have to borrow from abroad. That's why or government said Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana. Put this money in bank. Bank mein rakhte Other firms which are there in the economy, they borrow this 30 rupees. They borrow the 30 rupees and purchase this 30 rupees goods. Since firms purchase capital goods, so ideally yeah, capital goods Try to understand one thing, these firms which is producing 100 rupees of output, they understand from the market condition that the demand of the household is only 70, but the production is 100. So they will produce 70 consumption, 30 capital goods. If they are not going to put their saving in the bank, this will be unproductive. 
so that's why government is saying keep your saving in bank form other companies borrow when you keep money in bank savings in bank what happens with that companies are borrowing that and with that what they are doing they are purchasing equipments and setting a factory and with so next year output will be 100 or more than 100 more than 100 because this is going to increase the output next year if some job 140 crore indians we produce some output we produce some output let's say 1 lakh crore we got 1 lakh crore if we spend the entire money household if we spend the entire money that means the company has produced consumption goods but if we work worth rupees 1 lakh crore and we decide that we will spend only 70000 crore so company will start producing 70000 crore of consumption goods and the rest it will produce for the other entities present in the economy that is capital goods so if the so what is happening in the economy we are everyone is doing some work they are getting money whatever we are not spending we work we got money some we spend and some we save so whatever we are not spending whatever we are saving the same amount of capital goods is being produced on the other side of the economy so saving and capital goods production are two sides of the same coin. Did you understand this thing? So there is a slight difference between saving and investment. You produced output, you got money, whatever you did not spend. So whatever you did not spend, that is your saving. And whatever you did not spend, that means that much of capital goods got produced in the economy. So savings is something else. Investment, production of capital goods is something else. Yes, generally, if these people work, produce goods worth rupees 100, they got 100, they spent only 60. They spent only on 60 consumption goods. The rest they saved. That means this firm knows that households are going to purchase only 60 rupees of goods. So it will produce 40 rupees of goods for some other entities. Who else is there? Other companies. Companies purchase capital goods. So if we will work hard, get more money. If we will spend less save more more amount of capital goods will be produced and next year production will increase hmm. right higher percentage yes they saved a lot how that has happened later on but they have saving they have saved a lot. Okay. Inflation, Ayrato will discuss. If these people save this money in the form of gold, then what? Is Passe say they purchase gold and keep it with themselves, biscuits, gold biscuits, then what will happen? So when this people are purchasing this gold biscuits and keeping with itself is it productive asset or unproductive unproductive cash and gold same thing gold is unproductive gold is not being used anywhere but if you are keeping saving in the bank that is being used by companies to buy these factories suppose i am saying a statement mcdonald's a foreign company is investing rupees is investing in india is making investment in india worth rupees 5000 crore worth rupees 5000 crore so what do you understand by this statement yahan pe paise se matlab hai but try to understand i said ki investment means capital goods sometimes it is used in the context of money in what sense samjho aap i am saying ki uh, magdis is doing investment worth rupees 5000 crore iska do matlab ho sakta hai magdis brought rupees 5000 crore with that 5,000 crore, they purchased equipments from India and they set up a factory. So it's investment. Second case, what is possible? Magdis is doing rupees 5,000 crore of investment in India. It can also mean with 5,000 rupees crore, Magdis purchased equipment from abroad and brought it into India and set up as a factory. Both are investment. Both are investment. 
so whenever you are thinking that ki sometimes investment is being used in the context of finance money so again it means with that money capital goods is either purchased from india or it is brought outside into india ultimately the role is of capital goods samjhe aap so yes it's true but if we are producing more we are getting more money we are spending less we are spending less saving more if you are saving more more investment more output so who is going to purchase that more output we will have to export that's what china has exactly done that's what china has exactly done now here what is the gdp 100 how much got produced 100 rupees how much they got 100 so whatever is produced that they are going to get so whatever we produce that is also gdp whatever we got that is also gdp whatever we spent plus saved that is also gdp whatever they sold that is also gdp so gdp can be calculated in several ways three ways we will discuss gdp can be calculated in several ways theek hai now before that before we move towards gdp just tell me one thing this year whatever output is being produced means gdp output means gdp it is being produced by the four factors of production entrepreneur labor capital and natural so whatever is this produced in india who is purchasing this external here means i am export who purchases the most whatever output we are producing which sector purchases the maximum output household okay post covid our gdp declined post covid our gdp declined na post covid our gdp declined so when gdp declines production declines people lose jobs factories lay off factories lay off so when gdp declines there are a lot of negative repercussions in the economy so what we did to post covid our output declined so what we did for that ha huh? government started asking the people here that you produce road railway we will buy it we will buy it so they spent money and demanded output this government spent money and demanded output government said to a contractor that construct a road i will purchase your road theek hai so economic activity increased post these four are basically the drivers of economic growth these four are the drivers of economic growth in a market economy post 1991 we moved to market economy in a market economy basically the leading role is played by them government takes a back seat it just facilitates it just facilitates <coughs> but whenever these three fail government comes into action so post covid these three the demand of these three decreased government started demanding a lot of output what output government started demanding road railway airport it said to the contractors that construct airport government started demanding a lot any proof that government started demanding a lot government how government started purchasing from where government got the money fiscal deficit increased a lot so government started purchasing so government required money so government started borrowing a lot 
government started borrowing a lot from where government borrowed government borrowed from the banks you keep money in banks that money government also borrows private companies also theek hai so post covid economic recovery was driven by government spend acha so out of the total output how much output is being purchased by the outsiders export out of our total gdp some is purchased by household private government and some is purchased by the outsiders that is called export so out of our output how much is being purchased by the outsiders means what is our export koi idea 3% se kam hai na ha Twenty-three percent. Maximum is this. Its data is form में नहीं है. मैं बताऊँगा इसका. I will be telling you the data, but not exactly in this form. इसमें कुछ mix है उधर. I will just tell you in some time. So our exports are twenty-three percent of GDP. How much is our imports? 27% of gdp imports are 27% of gdp are imports part of gdp can we express it as a percentage of gdp yes direct indirect tax for us must do hmm ha right because this is uh sorry this is more than 50% household consumption ha more than 50% consumption in economy china ka this was 45% this was 40 to 45% now it has started coming down a little bit but china was export led economy अच्छा एक क्वेश्चन बताओ आई सेड कि इफ यू विल प्रोड्यूस मोर विल गेट मोर मनी इफ यू विल सेव मोर मोर कैपिटल गुड्स विल बी प्रोड्यूस ठीक है मोर कैपिटल गुड्स विल प्रोड्यूस नेक्स्ट ईयर आउटपुट विल बी मच मोर सो इफ वी आर इंक्रीजिंग सेविंग्स हु इज गोइंग टू परचेज दिस इंक्रीज आउटपुट विल हैव टू एक्सपोर्ट विल हैव टू एक्सपोर्ट सो इफ सेविंग्स इन द इकोनॉमी इंक्रीजेस if savings percentage in the economy increases if savings in the economy increases consumption increases or decreases acha ek cheez aap when the income of the people increases when income of the people increases savings increases or decreases when income increases savings increases or decreases You all agree that increase करता है? हाँ. When income increases, savings increases. ठीक है. And when income increases, consumption increases or decreases? In. When income increases, savings also increases. consumption also increases how is it possible kyunki jo hum keh rahe hain statement when income increases savings percentage increases and absolute consumption increases savings maybe akshay kumar may be saving 90% of his income theek hai 90% of his income he may be saving but his consumption is also much more because the 10% consumption absolute consumption is much more so when our income increases savings percentage increases and consumption at absolute level increases theek hai clear hai ye 
तो फर्स्ट जीडीपी पे आते हैं सौ रुपया मैंने कमाया रुपीज ट्वेंटी आई कंस रुपीज सेवेंटी आई कंज्यूम तो कंजम्पन एब्सोल्यूट कंजम्पन इज रुपीज सेवेंटी परसेंटेज कंजम्पन इज सेवेंटी परसेंट इफ माय सैलरी इज इंक्रीजिंग आई एम सेविंग मोर परसेंटेज सैलरी आई एम कंज्यूमिंग लेस परसेंटेज ऑफ सैलरी आई एम कंज्यूमिंग बट इफ माई सैलरी इंक्रीजेज टू वन सी आर सो इन माई सैलरी इज वॉज टेन लैख आई वॉज कंज्यूमिंग सेवेंटी परसेंट means 7 lakh when my salary was 10 lakh i was consuming 70% 7 lakh when my my salary increased to 1 cr i reduced my consumption to 30% but absolute consumption is 30 lakh my savings increased to 70% ha so direct indirect tax aap samajhte ho we will under discuss in detail our gdp Like 297 lakh crore, which is this time that is expected. Does it include direct tax, indirect tax, both or none? Hmm? Indirect tax include. That is, every place has heard the formula. Right. And what about direct? डायरेक्ट टैक्स समझते हो तभी पूछने का क्वेश्चन नहीं मतलब होता है इनकम आई मर्निंग दैट इज डायरेक्ट टैक्स कंपनीज के प्रॉफिट पे डायरेक्ट टैक्स इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स इज नाउ इट्स जीएसटी सो वॉट एवर जी डी पी टू नाइनटी सेवन लाख इज अवर जी डी पी डज इट इंक्लूड इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस यस इट इज इंक्लूडेड वॉट अबाउट डायरेक्ट टैक्स हाउ कैन यू से दैट Not included. आपके बगल वाले तो नॉट इंक्लूडेड बोल रहे हैं डायरेक्ट अच्छा सुनो ध्यान से सुनो मे बी आप लोग सही बोल रहे हैं गलत बोल रहे बट आपका लॉजिक समझो वी फोर प्रोड्यूस अ बर्गर ठीक है वी सोल्ड द बर्गर इन हंड्रेड रुपीज सो हंड्रेड रुपीज विल बी डिवाइडेड बिटवीन द फोर फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन सो हंड्रेड रुपीज इज कॉल्ड फैक्टर कॉस्ट GDP at factor. Whatever is coming to the four factors of production is called factor cost. So we produce GDP. We were selling GDP in hundred rupees. We got hundred rupees. It was divided into the four factors of production: GDP, hundred. If government comes into picture and says that we are also providing national security infrastructure, and with that only you are able to produce the burger, na? So we also want for our effort ten rupees. तो गवर्नमेंट सेड कि नाउ यू सेल द बर्गर इन 110 गवर्नमेंट सेड कि वी वांट टैक्स 10 रुपीस अभी हम बताएंगे इसको रुक जाओ अभी वी वांट टैक्स 10 रुपीस नाउ फोर फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन वांटेड 100 रुपीस उनको तो भाई 100 रुपीस दे वांट गवर्नमेंट सेड कि वी वांट 10 रुपीस फॉर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड अदर थिंग्स सो वी स्टार्टेड सेलिंग द बर्गर इन 110 ठीक तो जीडीपी इज 100 नाउ वी एक्सप्रेस जीडीपी एट मार्केट प्राइस बिफोर 2014 वी वर एक्सप्रेसिंग एट factor so you will say gdp 110 rather than 100 so that 10 rupees is the indirect tax so 110 ka example mein so the example that i took 110 that is basically 297 lakh crore of india this year so 297 lakh crore includes indirect tax so we produced burger and factor cost plus indirect tax 100 plus 10. This becomes 11 10 market price. So GDP is 110. GDP is 110. So we produced the four factors of production will get 100. Government will get 10. Government will get 10. Out of the 100 that we got, I got 20 rupees wages. in that which i paid 2 rupees personal income tax 
by the wages the profit out of that 100 so 100 came to ye 10 goes to government as indirect tax 100 comes to factor cost four factors out of this 100 we are paying some tax out of this 100 if my wages is 20 out of that i am paying personal income tax if profit is 30 out of that 30 the company is paying some tax Okay. So if our GDP is 110 and 10 rupees indirect tax and the 100 that we got profit, interest, rent and wages, let's say out of that 100, we are paying 15 as direct taxes on profit, rent, interest and wages. We are paying how much tax? 15 rupees. Okay. So 15 rupees direct tax and 10 rupees indirect tax both are part of gdp both are part of gdp what is the tax to the gdp so 15 plus 10 25 gdp is 110 so 25 by 110 this is tax to gdp ratio what is the actual tax to gdp ratio of india so india will be hogana true so what is the act? So 297 lakh crore is the output at market price, including taxes. Some is going to government as indirect tax. Let's say 297 lakh crore may. Some is going to indirect tax. Rest is coming as profit, interest, rent, and wages. Out of that, we are paying direct taxes. So what is the total tax? D GDP you will divide out of this. How much is the tax? India ka tax to GDP ratio kya yehi pooch rahe na? So what is the ratio? Aap log yaad karte ho, but connect karke yaad nahi rahe ho, uska aadha figure yaad rakhte ho, aur aadha bhool jate ho. Approx 16 by 16 percent our tax to gdp is 16 percent 11 percent is central taxes five percent is states taxes so india's tax to gdp ratio is around 16 percent and this 16 percent So tax paying it is called bifurcation. But I'm going to now coming to GDP. So GDP, as I said, we can calculate through different methods. Whatever we produce, that is also GDP. What we got, that is also GDP. Whatever we spend, that is also GDP. And questions, some log kuch kal se practice karing abhi aaj to first day tha to. Okay. Or maybe ek. Uh, the booklet that I released, the first question, how many of you have tried? Listen. So, how you solve? Kitne log try ki or nahi hua? Asa koi nahi hai. Okay. So, GDP is final value of goods and services produced in the final value of goods and services produced in the economy. Right. So, there are three methods. Income method. We have already done okay, na? income method. We have done na? profit, interest, rent, and wages, right? Income method, how we calculate GDP? Sum of profit of all companies plus interest plus rent plus wages. Okay. Then second is value added method. And third is expenditure. Who calculates GDP? NSO. By which methods? NSO calculate karta hai na? Which methods?
because of the huge informal economy and so is not able to calculate gdp through income method so we calculate through these two methods ideally it should be same ideally it should come same what if there is a difference if there is a difference which value we publishes value added if let's say value uh, this year gdp rupees 297 lakh crore came by value added method 300 lakh crore came by expenditure method why there can be difference informal economy and you know? everything we are not able to collect accurately so we will declare that this is the discrepancy but the value that gdp that is being published by nso we take off the value added method theek hai just uh, uh, briefly samajh lete hain value added method in value added method how we calculate gdp we do the value addition of all the firms we do value addition of all firms let's say there is a farmer and baker board pe dekho farmer and baker farmer produced wheat worth rupees 100 50 he sold and rupees 50 he consumed theek hai 50 rupees wheat he consumed 50 rupees wheat he sold to the baker baker took this 50 rupees wheat did some value addition and sold the bread in rupees 200 ठीक है लेट मी जस्ट रिपीट अगेन फार्मर डिड नॉट यूज एनी इनपुट दिस हाइपोथेटिकल सिचुएशन है फार्मर डिड नॉट यूज एनी इनपुट ही प्रोड्यूस व्हीट वर्थ रुपीस 100 50 ही कंज्यूम 50 ही सोल्ड टू द बेकर 50 ही कंज्यूम बेकर यूज दैट 50 रुपीस व्हीट डिड सम वैल्यू एडिशन एंड कन्वर्टेड इनटू रुपीस 200 ऑफ ब्रेड नाउ जीडीपी बाय वैल्यू एडेड मेथड व्हाट वी डू वैल्यू एडेड बाय value added by all firms present in the economy how many firms are there value addition by farmer acha what do you understand by value addition how much value my work can fetch in the market what is the value of my work in the market whether it fetched or not doesn't matter whatever work i did what is its value farmer produced wheat worth rupees 100 his value addition is 100 whatever work he did he produced wheat worth rupees 100 what is the value of his work 100 whether he consumed or sold doesn't matter see what do you understand by value addition whatever you produced whatever you produced whatever work you did whatever value you produced whether you are consuming that product or not does not matter you did work na so the value of your work value addition is value of your work so what is the value of the farm uh, what is the value of the work done by the farmer 100 if a farmer is growing wheat in indian agriculture mean whatever farmers are producing if they are consuming is it being counted in gdp or not yes वैल्यू एडिशन का ध्यान से मतलब समझ लो इट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ योर वर्क वेदर यू कंज्यूम सोल्ड और नॉट डजेंट मैटर इफ यू डिड सम वर्क वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ योर वर्क इन द मार्केट वेदर यू सोल्ड एंड गॉट दैट वैल्यू दैट डजेंट मैटर इफ यू डिड सम वर्क एंड देर इज अम वैल्यू ऑफ द वर्क दैट इज काउंटेड सो द वर्क डन बाई द फार्मर इज वर्थ रुपीज हंड्रेड ही हेज प्रोड्यूस वीट वर्थ रुपीज हंड्रेड Value addition by baker, one fifty. GDP, two fifty. This is by value added method. What is the standard definition of GDP? Final value of goods and services produced. How many final goods are there? Final. This is the. Let's cross check it. 
that whether it is true or not. By standard method, GDP is final value of wheat, final value of all goods and services, final value of wheat, final value of bread. What is the final value of wheat? Only this is final. This is intermediate. Oh, your cross check. So much real. Could doubt it about this is by standard definition of GDP final value of goods and services produced. This which is not final. This is intermediate. This is final. So final 50, this one, and 200 is the final value of bread. फाइनल कैलकुलेट कर आपको फाइनल कैलकुलेट करना है जीडीपी इज फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्रोड्यूस फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ ब्रेड व्हाट इज द फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ ब्रेड 200 फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ व्हीट दिस व्हीट इज फाइनल दिस इज नॉट फाइनल Now in India, when we NSO calculates GDP, it calculates value addition of agriculture sector, value addition of industrial sector, and then value addition by services sector. How does NSO calculate GDP? It calculates by value added method. So value added method is calculate? Suppose in India, the agricultural production, agriculture, industry, services. Let's say the value of wheat produced is rupees 100 and the farmer did not use any input. ITC purchased this wheat converted into Asirwad Atta and he ITC sold the Atta in rupees 500. This restaurant owner services, he purchased Atta in 500 rupees and sold the chapati in rupees 1000. Plus government imposed rupees 100 tax. Now you paid rupees 1100. How NSO calculates GDP? value addition in agri sector value addition in industrial sector value addition in services sector plus indirect taxes subsidies value addition agriculture sector 100 industrial sector 400 services 500 so this becomes When NSO is calculating GDP, it, of course, tax is added, indirect tax. But indirect tax is not added in every sector. Government knows that how much it collected all indirect taxes in its account. Okay? So this is added separately. So when we are calculating this, we exclude taxes here. Right now, our economic growth will be approx. What is the economic growth? 7%. Approx. 7%. This economic growth seven percent approx. Agri industry services. So 7% kaise aya? You know the GDP is increasing by 7% annually. This 7% is the combined effect of agriculture, industry and services. Average hai. This 7% is the average of agriculture, industry, services. This 7% of economic growth bolte ho, this is combined of these three sectors, na? So this 7% is average of these three sectors or not? If, how, what is our agri-growth, approx? 
सेवन परसेंट इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ में वॉट इज एग्रीकल्चर ग्रोथ अप्रॉक्स है तो थोड़ा बहुत माइनर चेंजेस है इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर ग्रोथ एटीन परसेंट आएगा तो कहां से आएगा वो ये ना बिना समझे रहते हो एटीन परसेंट शेयर है वो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रोथ अप्रॉक्स फाइव परसेंट फाइव पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इफ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ यू नो दीज थिंग्स हाउ विल यू कैलकुलेट मैं आपको एक स्टेटमेंट बोलता हूं यू हैव टू टेल इट इज ट्रू और फॉल्स इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इज द एवरेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इंडस्ट्रियल एंड सर्विसेज सेक्टर ग्रोथ हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू थिंक इट्स ट्रू एंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ थिंक इट्स फॉल्स और बाकी लोग our agricultural production is increasing by 3.5% industrial production is increasing by 5% and services production is increasing by 8 to 9% 7% came through weighted average what will be the weights what are the weights here share in gdp शेयर इन नहीं समझ रहे वेटेड एवरेज समझते हो सो दिस इज नॉट सिंपल एवरेज दिस इज वेटेड एवरेज वेट ऑफ दिस वेट मतलब शेयर इन जीडीपी राइट वेट मीन्स शेयर इन जीडीपी इफ सम इंडस्ट्री हैज वेरी हाई शेयर एंड ग्रोथ रेट इज लेस इट विल पुल डाउन द इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ राइट शेयर ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इज अप्रॉक्स इंडस्ट्री इज अप्रॉक्स सर्विसेज अप्रॉक्स How will you calculate economic growth now? समझ गए आपको कैलकुलेट करने के लिए नहीं आएगा बट दिस स्टेटमेंट कैन ऑलवेज बी आस समझ गए इन द लास्ट थ्री फोर इयर्स हुज शेयर विच सेक्टर शेयर in the gdp has showing an increasing trend none of them but ekdam constant hai are wo growth bata raha hai i am talking about share I am asking ki in GDP which sector share has in the last few years slightly improved? Chalo, great. Or its share increase hua hai, to kisi na kisi ka it must have decreased. This is remaining almost stagnant. Or if why this has increased? 
because government is taking a lot of effort on infrastructure. If government is constructing road, that is an economic activity. Will it be part of GDP? Yes. Huh? Yes. In which sector? Industrial sector. Industrial sector. Okay. Industrial sector ka part. Aap dhyan rakhna. Just uh, five minutes more. So, so you have to board pay up. When NSO calculates GDP, the GDP market price is value addition. Gross value, we have to look at gross value addition of agriculture, gross value addition of industry, gross value addition of services. That 3.5% growth, that 3.5% growth is GVA agriculture. That 3.5% growth is increasing GVA of agriculture. But this 7% is of these three plus increase in taxes samjhe separate sectors ka the growth that is published that is gva growth that is gva value addition growth but when we are telling about the economic growth taxes are also included so tax growth is also part of economic growth but GVA growth mein taxes are not that part. Aara samaj mein? Because separately we calculate GVA of every sector. Excluding taxes. Just 5 minutes up out padlo. Uske baad we will discuss. So income method we discussed. Value addition method we discussed. Expenditure method. A very important method. Expenditure method GDP. Thoda sa dhyan se dekho board pe. Whatever is produced, it is purchased by household, government, private, and export. Whatever is produced is purchased by these four. So GDP is expenditure made by the household sector on domestically produced goods. Because GDP is domestic production eh? and household purchase consumption goods. So Expenditure made by the household sector on domestically produced consumption goods. Household purchase consumption goods. Then expenditure made by the private sector on domestic. Why I am saying domestic? Because we are calculating GDP. So whatever they are spending to purchase domestic goods, only that will be included in GDP. What is this seed as? Expenditure by household on domestically produced consumption goods. Expenditure by private sector on domestically produced capital. Because private sector purchases capital goods. Expenditure by government on domestically produced consumption and capital both. Because government purchases both. Government purchases wheat also, government purchases equipment also. Plus plus expenditure by all the people outside that they do on the purchase of goods from India, that is export. Okay. This is all domestic. Now this is expenditure by household on domestically produced items. But household purchase imported items. Household purchase imported items. This is difficult to get. So better I, this is expenditure by household on domestic and imported both minus expenditure by household on imported. So this will give this expenditure by household on domestic and imported both minus expenditure by household on imported. So this will give you expenditure by household on domestic items. We know this, we know this. It is easier for us to calculate. In the same way, Indian private sector 
spends to purchase capital goods from here and they import also. So expenditure by Indian private sector on domestic and imported both minus What is IM? Expenditure by Indian private sector on imported capital goods. This is expenditure by Indian private sector on total capital goods. Domestic and imported, both. <coughs> Same thing is true for government also. Government also spends to purchase domestic and imported both minus imported plus X. Clear, eh? So C plus I plus G plus X minus this is the total import of India. Who imports? Household, government, private. So what is this C? C kya hai? Domestic or imported or both? Both hai. Aapke aankh ke saamne likha hua dekhiye. This is expenditure by household on domestic. Why we are calculating domestic? GDP. This is domestic. This is domestic plus import minus import. So this will give this. So C, what is C? Domestic plus import both, na? Huh? This is doubt C is domestic and imported both. So this is domestic and imported both. You have been given four parameters and this one. I ask you that, tell me what is the investment in India? Which parameter will you tell? I gave you four parameters. Now you have to tell that which parameter represents investment in India. This is consumption. This is consumption. G is spends on capital goods also, government and consumption also. G investment, capital goods or G consumption. Total investment in India is private investment, government. Government is constructing roads, na? that is investment. Samjay, does this include imported capital goods? Huh? Yes. Logic clear. Hai. Imported capital goods are part of investment. So this will be investment. Does this include imported capital goods? Yes. Kya dikkat hai? Or you kitna? This is this one is <coughs> kitna bacha. Huh? <coughs> this is 30, 60, 30, 90 ho gaya. 91, 104, minus 4. Okay. So when I told you, just 2 minutes. So this is the board. 
this gdp is purchased gdp means production within the trade is purchased by household government private and ex data generally this data is not available how much of the gdp is purchased by the household that is not separately told but this data we know how much is the this is expenditure by household on domestic and imported both consumption goods samajh gaye now out of this which investment is more government now let's bifurcate government psu that is also government sector informal businesses informal businesses also invest we call it household investment but that is basically business household this is basically business informal business we have a separate data and corporates so basically this is total private informal business is private this is total private invest this is total government sector invest and total is 30% total is 30% statement aata hai that out of the total investment psu's investment is more than the government investment true or false अब टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट है ये लेट्स तो इफ वी से टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट इज हंड्रेड आउट ऑफ हंड्रेड आर आर देखो हंड्रेड नहीं थर्टी फाइव थर्टी एट सी This is highest. How much? Twenty-seven. Or how much? Informal business investments. Informal businesses. Actually, what is it? When we are constructing our house, it's treated as capital good. It's treated as capital goods it is treated as investment so all the people who are constructing household hum log ghar khareed rahe hain all is part of here all the informal businesses is here so further segregation hai but this is private and this is government this is informal businesses investment if the whole investment is 100 this is the bifurcation approx exact aapko yaad nahi rakhna but you should know that private investment is more than government investment in government government investment is more than the psu and this government is general government means center and state combined center and state teen statement isi se ban jayega government's investment is more than the public uh, psu's investment overall government investment is less than the corporate's investment just 2 minutes 10 minute nahi padhayenge bas 2 minute theek hai now ye samajh gaye aap hmm isko thoda sa aur acche se samajh lo taki aap bhuloge nahi important capital goods are part of investment right let's say india produced simplify kar ke batate india produced only capital goods rupees 50 capital goods india produced theek hai and it exported 
worth rupees 20 capital. I am assuming GDP is equal to C plus I. What is G? Kya government sector? Government sector expenditure on imported and domestic consumption and capital goods. Total, na? this is total government expenditure on imported and domestic both. Na? Let's, I'm assuming G is zero, C is zero, M is zero. Mera assumption. Theke? What is the investment here in India? Huh? 30? GDP? So investment 30? Hai? Oh yeah. Here we again. If we import, if we import rupees 10 of capital, GDP, GDP is still 50. Investment in India, 40. Investment. Investment 40. Clear? Hai? Abhi ujo 450 ka jo first question. Aap try karna. Or nahi banega to hum kal discuss karenge. But, thik hai? Aap usko try karna. Otherwise, I will discuss tomorrow. Lekin fir kal ho na time barbaad ho. This I... Take our question. Whatever capital goods India produced and got exported, does this I includes the exported capital goods? No. From this I, we have removed the exported part. Exported part is not our investment. Exported part is not our investment. So we produced capital goods, whatever we exported, we separated. And here we Im added imported capital goods and then we again separated. GDP was expenditure by household on domestic item, expenditure by private sector on domestic capital goods, Expenditure by government <coughs> on domestic plus whatever was purchased by outside people. Thik. So from India, whatever was purchased by outsiders that we separated. Some If some capital goods got produced and it was purchased by outsiders. So from I, we have removed this. Thik. So this I is whatever capital goods got produced. Excluding that export. Now this I is expenditure by private sector on domestically produced capital goods. This I is expenditure by private on domestic and imported both. Minus imported. Here did we add expenditure by private on imported goods? Yes. Here we added. Nah? Here we added. And that's why we put a IM. And this I am becomes X minus. First question try again. Nio ga to fir hum log kal discuss karenge. ठीक है? चलो we'll discuss it tomorrow. मुझे लगता है कि patience सब खत्म हो गया. एक बार try करके आना. We'll discuss it tomorrow. ठीक? हाँ right. वो भी कल बता देंगे. Unacademy. Let's crack it.